So, in honor of WrestleMania 30 coming up pretty soon, I figured I was gonna at least try to watch as many WrestleManias from the WWE Network as possible. And I'm gonna talk about WrestleMania 1, which was back in 1985, back when I was not even born yet. This was at Madison Square Garden. The attendance record is at just over 19,000, which I know compared to today is like only 19,000. But again, it's Madison Square Garden. And for the garden, that's pretty damn good. Now, these matches, I'm going to go through them pretty quickly because first match, Tito Santana beats the Executioner. Now, I was not aware of the Executioner before this. He was just this big, heavy set guy wearing a mask. I didn't really get the point of his character. Tio Santana has always been a pretty solid wrestler, so he easily got the win. King Kong Bundy next squashed Special Delivery Jones. And I felt bad because I was kind of looking forward to seeing what SD Jones was going to do, but then no. Literally after two moves, big splash, King Kong Bundy got the win. He was out there with Jimmy Hart. Clearly, they were setting up King Kong Bundy for a big main event spot, which he got the following year. Then we got Ricky Steamboat versus Matt Bourne, who I looked him up, and I found out that he later became Doink the Clown. He was, for the most part, Doink the Clown through Doink's career, even though there's been so many Doink the Clowns. Who really knows? This match was okay. Um, Ricky Steamboat kind of seemed like the one who was putting everything into this match. Drop kick galore. Steamboat got the win. David San Martino, yes, Bruno San Martino's son, who honestly I didn't even know that Bruno had a son. Bruno was out there with him and he fought Brutus Beefcake, who before the match they did an interview and Brutus didn't really say anything. And it was funny because I remember Brutus, you know, being the guy who was charismatic and would cut people's hair after the match. But this was before all that, so he wasn't, there wasn't really much to his character. The match itself ended on a double DQ, which is disappointing, especially for WrestleMania. But I know, it's the first WrestleMania. Then we had Junkyard Dog versus Greg the Hammer Valentine for the Intercontinental Championship. Now, I, again, I wanted to see Junkyard Dog win it, but no, it was a countout. And I'm like, damn it, WWF. Like, first, first you squash Special Delivery Jones, and then you can't give Junkyard Dog the title. Not saying WWE's racist. But they've never had a black world heavyweight champion either, have they? Nikolai Volkov in Iron Sheik versus the U.S. Express. This is Mike Rotundo, who later became IRS. Actually, Bray Wyatt's father. And Barry Windham. They were the tag team champions, but no, Nikolai Volkov and Iron Sheik win the belts. And these two had probably some of the biggest heat back then. Their characters... Were pretty good. Now, Andre the Giant versus Big John Stud with Bobby Heenan in a $15,000 body slam challenge. I found this pretty interesting, not only because Andre the Giant was undefeated for like 15 years. Wow. Today's standards, that's completely unheard of. But not only that, this is a body slam challenge and Andre the Giant was the underdog. Or he at least was the good guy. And it's funny, a guy at his size going into this match with a body slam challenge. And Big John Stud isn't that small of a guy either. But you just, you had to figure that Andre was going to win, right? He does, of course, get the body slam. He gets the money, which I like seeing him throw it out to the crowd. And of course, Bobby Heenan sneakily coming there to grab the money away from him. Next up, Women's Championship match. Yes, they had a women's title all the way back then. Wendy Richter defeated Leanna Kai. I'm not too aware of her, but Wendy Richter had Cindy Lauper out there. Which, it's funny because nowadays when I see celebrities show up in wrestling, I roll my eyes and go, oh, do we really need so-and-so on this show? But back then, in the 80s, this was a big deal. This got WWF 
mainstream attention. This put them at a different level. And it's not like WWE needs that type of attention now, but I understand the importance of it. It's almost like seeing this show and seeing how many celebrities were involved at the time. You got it. You got why them being involved made the show just that much better. Uh, now, the main event, or should I say, the main event, Hulk Hogan and Mr. T versus Rowdy Roddy Piper and Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. This match, wow. I actually, when I was watching this WrestleMania, I stopped it and I watched the WrestleMania Rewind of this main event because they really delved into the buildup that went into this match. The buildup was insane. And the media attention that they got from Mr. T alone, it's surprising. It's surprising not only how involved Mr. T was, but even when you watch the match, like Mr. T starts the match. And he spends a good amount of time in the ring, which who saw that coming? Roddy Piper might have been the best heel at the time. It's still amazing to me that he's never, ever won the world title. Uh, the match was a lot better than I was expecting with Mr. T being in there. And obviously Hulk Hogan, he got the win. You also had Jimmy Snuka and Hulk Hogan in Mr. T's corner. I don't really know why he was with them. And you had Bob Orton, Randy Orton's father. He was out there with Piper, Mr. Wonderful. And that's another thing, watching this whole show, how many people had either managers, valets, or just someone out there in their corner. You missed that today. What, today we only have Zeb Coulter and Paul Heyman for managers, the great managers, but we need more managers. It, it helps build up these matches so much when you have somebody, when you have a wrestler with somebody in the corner to, to talk them up, to make them look like they're as bad as they should be. And also in this main event, you had Pat Patterson was a referee, Muhammad Ali was the special enforcer outside the ring. Liberace was out there dancing. Again, the celebrities, this show. Some people, I saw someone make a review about this WrestleMania and said that it wasn't that impressive. They didn't like the matches all that much. And I get that if you're more used to today, or even if you started watching wrestling in the 90s, to go back and watch some of these shows in the 80s might not be your thing. It's a slower pace. But I, I respect it. And I get a kick out of watching a lot of these wrestlers. And to how the energy that the fans bring into this, you can tell it was a different era. You can tell it was a different just generation of wrestling. In a lot of ways, yeah, I wasn't watching it then, but I would have loved to experience wrestling at this time. It just it seemed like a different level. Also, what makes this first WrestleMania so big, historic, you've heard, how many times have you heard this story? Mystic Man bet everything on this show. Literally, if this show tanked, if people didn't watch, they were all going to be out of a job. And I couldn't imagine if that would happen. There was even a moment where you saw Hogan and Mr. T coming from the hallway and you see Mystic Man for a quick second out there in the hallway because he, he was probably watching every second of this show, making sure everything went planned and went smoothly. Again, WrestleMania 1, some people are going to say it's dated. Some people are going to say it's, it's not their favorite WrestleMania. But I, I think it was a good WrestleMania. The main event especially... I'd say that was the best match of the night, especially for excitement level. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you've seen WrestleMania 1, what you thought of it. Maybe I'll keep doing this with more WrestleManias. Who knows? Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Later!